participants. So today we are starting our set of lectures, live lectures, in regard to English law. This is specifically for those who are currently prepare for the solicitor's qualifying examination or for those who just want to study English law. And today, uh, my guest is Oliver Gray, who is a um, solicitor and originally from England. So he knows the system of England and Wales very well. And Oliver is our lecturer and tutor and mentor. Oliver, we will deliver that in the form of a conversation, if you don't mind. And my first question is like a preliminary question. What is the distinctive feature of the common law? Thank you, Olga. Um, one of the things I would say really distinguishes common law systems from uh, the systems adopted in civil law jurisdictions is really the, the discretion that is afforded to judges in terms of interpretation and judicial creativity. Um, the role that judges seem to play in civil law jurisdictions is far more limited, a uh, limited degree of interpretation and far more a focus on application. In common law jurisdictions, we have more of a... a I suppose, uh, a system that builds upon previous cases, uh, really in the hopes of both evolution of, of the law itself over time, um, and also in terms of creating greater consistency. So uh, in this regard, we can say about special role of judiciary in, in the um, legal system of England and Wales. <clears throat> can you tell us a little bit more about it, this role? Of the judiciary specifically? Yeah, and also uh, the role of judiciary in the whole system, like yeah, uh, I mean, parliament the, and executive. Absolutely, I mean, what I would say on on this um, slide, what we can see is really the the organs of state. Uh, we have the whole concept of the the separation of powers. If anyone studied um, anything in terms of legal philosophy, uh, I think I remember this. This is something that was quite heavily written about by John Locke and uh, also by Montesquieu. Um, so we separate these powers so that there's a system of checks and balances and nobody is doing everything at once. Um, we have uh, obviously Parliament making the law, ju the judiciary then uh, interpreting this and having a degree of distance from Parliament, but ultimately trying to um, actually apply what they've created with their intention the, the role of the judiciary is, as we see on the slide, is uh, to be independent, to be integrous uh, and impartial, but also to apply the law depending on their approach, uh, as I know we'll come on to, um, hopefully in line with what Parliament had intended. So how someone can become a judge in the UK? So to become a judge, it's opened up more in recent years to people who are not barristers. Before, it was certainly something that was predominantly uh, barristers sort of climbed and eventually became judges, many of them. Um, now it's a lot more open and certainly in the, the lower courts, uh, it is possible with five years of post-qualified experience as a, a solicitor, a barrister or a fellow of the Institute of Chartered Legal Executives um, to apply to the uh, judicial Applications Committee uh, Commission, sorry, to become a judge. Um, for some of the higher courts, I think anything above the High Court itself, it's uh, seven years post qualified experience and open only to solicitors and barristers. There's a need also to have relevant experience in advocacy or, or the areas specifically that you intend to oversee as a judge. Before we move any further, we can see here on the slides also three principal, uh, like three main elements of English law, common law that we already touched upon. Um, but if you want to add something, equity, I think not yeah. everyone understands what it is and how yeah. it's correlates with the legislation, if you could comment a little bit about that. Yeah, absolutely. Equity is a, a really interesting area. Um, and as you say in the slide, derived in the Middle Ages, so uh courts of equity, the, the chancery division sort of started to emerge in the 13th century and then became more what we know as equity today in about the 16th century. Um, and it was mainly a court or a series of courts that were created to hear disputes where remedies were being sought that were not necessarily legal remedies. Uh, so a, an equitable remedy, previously uh, specific performance, is, is one thing that was pursued through the chancery courts. 
People may be not acquainted with the term of specific performance, maybe you... Yeah, know. sorry, specific performance. So, for example, if we have an agreement uh, and you you breach that agreement, rather than simply seeking damages, I may say, no, I, I don't feel I can be adequately compensated with damages. I don't want compensation here or money. What I want is for you to actually do what we had agreed. I want the agreement to be performed. Um, so I can apply for an order that that agreement is performed. So this is specific performance. Uh, equity is is a huge part now of a lot of key areas of English law. It's very pervasive. Um, something that you need to have a very good understanding of, for example, if you hope to uh, succeed in areas like property law, family law, or probate law. Yeah, we don't have anything like that really, like very close to that, at least in the civil law jurisdiction. I'm dual qualified by my actual uh, legal regions uh, is civil law. So that's what I can say. People who study that law from scratch pay attention to equity and trust. It's mm. quite a complex area of law. Mm.